Hey, this is Avdevari from TheKnerf.com and it's time for another viewer request and it's not a simple request, it's Tommy Emanuel's Classical Gas. Now, Tommy Emanuel's arrangement of Classical Gas is nothing short of marvelous. This is not just going to be a lesson, this is going to be a journey. We're going to learn so much from this, you're not going to believe this. Um, this is like an encyclopedia of guitar playing, what we're going to learn here. So first, let me play it for you so you can see and hear how it goes. Just keep in mind, I'm not Tommy Emmanuel, so I'm not going to play it as perfectly as he does. I don't think anybody can play it as he does. Uh, but I'm going to give it my best shot, and then we're going to break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen and everything. So take a deep breath, relax, meditate if you need to. Um, we're going to have a blast. It goes like this. So, um, first thing you need to know is that this uh, lesson is a gift. Uh, one of your fellow viewers donated a very generous sum of money for me to 
make time to learn this, practice this, and make this lesson, and then edit the lesson and upload the lesson. It all takes time. So thank you so much for enabling this lesson. I'm sure we, we are all thankful and not just me. So thank you. Um, all right, so this is in A minor. This is in A minor, even though uh, it uh, takes quite a few detours from the scale itself. Uh, you begin quite um, similarly to the, um, to the original classical gas A part. Um, you begin with this. Alright, with the last note um, as a transition to a G chord. Now, the original of course is this. Okay, I've got a lesson for the original classical gas by Mason Williams. If you want, go and learn it. It's quite impressive by itself. Um, Tommy Emanuel plays something uh, simpler. He plays this. All right. Um, now, sometimes he likes to play the chord. Another important thing before we begin, Tommy Emanuel changes his arrangement every time. He plays something different every time. He plays with the chords and the melodies. I'm going to show you different ways he plays it and different ways you can play with it. So keep in mind that nothing is set in stone. Um, so he plays this. Okay. Now you play the A minor chord. Uh, you play either just the bass and the B string on one or you play the entire chord, um, all four strings, strings uh, two to four. The B string, the G string, the D string, and the A string. Either like this, or like this. All right? And then you pull off your finger from the B string, uh, so it's a pull off from one to zero. Okay? Now just with the bass note. All right? Then you play the G string on two, it's still a chord, okay, it's an A note. And then on the B string, one, um, zero, one. Okay, so it's one, zero, two on the, B, on the G string, then on the B string again, zero, one, okay? And then you take the chord off and you play an open B string. Okay, now sometimes, he pulls off from one to zero. So he plays this. Okay? Okay, it gives it a simple embellishment. A simple yet impressive. All right, and then you play the open B string, and then right away you play the G bass, three on the E string, the E bass, then strings D and G, the fourth and third strings, then the, the same thing with the F sharp bass, two on the E bass, it's G over F sharp. And then you put on an E minor chord and you play the E bass, then the D string on two. And then you play B string. Then on the G string with your pinky, two, zero, two then open B string again. Okay, so it's... Got it? So, again. Okay? And then... Um, now again, on the E minor lick, this one, sometimes he slides the pinky back from three to two on the G string and then sounds like this. Okay? Slower. Also, take the chord off and just slide. It's more comfortable that way. OK? 
Okay, but then this note, the E note, um, is taken off of the guitar, and then you're left with this. Uh, it's, a it's a little thinner, but um, if it sounds good to you, then why not? So, again, slower. first ending, the first ending is this. You put the A minor chord back on, you play the G string, and then you play the bass, and then on both G and D strings you play this. Okay, so it's... Okay, and between those two um, licks you play the bass again, so it's 0-2 on both G and D strings, bass note again, then 0, 2 on the G and D string, uh, strings again. So it's 0, 2 bass, 0, 2. Okay? So the entire ending, again, 2 on the G string, uh, yeah, 2 on the G string, bass, 0, 2, bass, 0, 2. Got it? Slower. bass note or with a couple of bass notes, either just the A bass or a couple of bass notes, okay? Uh, and then you start again, together. this transition, uh, which is actually the entire motif for Tommy Emanuel's arrangement, is the chromatic uh, movement. The chromatic movement is this, okay, it's this, pay attention, it's one on the, a, on the B string, then three on the B string, then on the E string it's zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay? And then it jumps to 7. So this is what Tommy Emanuel bases his arrangement on, this chromatic click, because the chromatic motif is going to repeat itself throughout the arrangement. You're going to see what I mean. Um, this is the first time it shows up. Now, it's also in the original uh, classical guess, but that uh, that arrangement, the original composition, goes like this. Okay, it's different. Tommy Emanuel accentuates the chords and adds a couple of chords instead of just instead of just notes. Um, anyway, it's A minor. You pick strings two, three, four, and five, and then G over B. Uh, two on the A string, three on the B string. And again, you pick strings two, three, four, and five. And then C, and you pick strings one, two, three, and five. Then F, a small F, not a full F. You can pick a full F if you want. Um, a small F works as well. Uh, half F. Um, I like to call it a small F because it's shorter than this. Um, never mind. Um, and again, you pick uh, strings 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then D, strings 1, 2, 3, and 4. G, strings 1, 2, 3, and 6. Then um, an E chord, 
D-shaped on 4, uh, you take D, 2 frets up, and you play the E bass along with it. You play strings 1, 2, 3, and the uh, E bass, the 6th string. Or you can play this, and bar the 4th fret, put your finger on the 5th fret of the B string, and another finger on the 6th fret of the D string. And then it's um, E over G sharp. Okay, I like to play a full E chord with the E bass. And then, um, F sharp, um, F sharp diminished. Um, from strings 1 to 4, it's 5, 4, 5, 4. Okay? Pinky, second finger, third finger, first finger. Okay? Okay, it's 5 on the E string, 4 on the B string, 5 on the G string, 4 on the D string. And you need to play this, strings 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then take this two frets up to 7 to uh, G sharp um, diminished. Okay, and and then begins the B part, okay, which is this, and so on. Again, A minor, G over B, C, F, D, G, E, F sharp diminished, G sharp diminished. Now without talking. first half of the 8 bar. Okay? You're done with the 8 bar. Now the real fun begins. Um, the B part. The B part begins like this. It's an A minor chord. You bar strings 1, 2, and 3 with your finger. And add your pinky on 8 on the E string and play the A bass along with it. You play strings 1, 2, 3, and 5. Again, you can um, pick strum it. Okay? Okay, you don't have to pick everything at once. Okay, you can downward pick it. Whichever sounds better to you. Tommy Emmanuel changes it from time to time. Even uh, while he's playing it, he changes it. First time around he plays it like that, second time around he plays it differently, uh, other times he just plays this, okay, without the B string. It all depends on whatever sound you want to get out of the guitar. Anyway, this is the chord. And then on the E string, 7 and 5, then pinky on 8 on the B string, then 5 again on the E string. Okay, got it? 8, 7, 5, 8 on the B string, 5 on the E string. Now, you can harmonize with the lower notes. Okay? Just don't pick the E string when you pick the B string as your melody note. Just pick the G string as your harmony. Okay, so it's... If you want. If not, just harmonize occasionally. Got it? Whichever sounds good to you. Experiment with it. Uh, find uh, your own way of expressing things on the guitar. Okay, now you can add a bass note. Okay, after the 8 on the B string. Bass. Okay? And then this. Um, with your pinky and third finger on the B and G strings, you pick 7, the 7th fret, okay? 7 and 7 on the G and B string. Then this. Okay, it's... On the A string, it's 0, 3, 2, and you slide up. 
and um, it doesn't slide to anywhere in particular, it just slides up, okay? It doesn't slide up to any note. It ju it's just an embellishment, it's an effect. And then open A string again, so it's a zero, two, uh, zero, three, two, zero, with a slide between the two and the zero. And then two on the G string, Okay, sometimes uh, Tommy Emanuel slaps it, sometimes he just plays it like this. Um, and then 3 to 0 on the E string, okay? It's pretty simple, um, it's just the, the scale, okay? 0, 3, 2, slide. Zero, two on the G string, which is an A note. Uh, on the E string, the E bass, three, two, zero. And then this again. And then he plays this. A, A. Um, natural harmonic on five on the second, third, and fourth strings, on five. If you don't know how to produce a natural harmonic, uh, you just place your finger above the steel string, uh, the, the steel string, of course the steel string, the steel uh, fret, above the steel part, the fret itself. Um, right above it, you touch the strings, you don't press it. If this is the string, you don't press it, you just touch it. And then you pick and let it go, let it ring. Okay, so it's A, A, 5 on 2, 3, and 4, and then A, A, 12, natural harmonic on 12, um, on the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd strings, okay? Okay, so it's um, here, it's a G chord, just, it's G over A, if you want to call it like that. Um, and here, it's E minor over A. Um, the ear doesn't hear a G chord and an E minor chord, it just hears a uh, solo. But that's what it is and that's why it works. Right? Uh, if you try it on the piano, it will sound good as well, just make sure there's a wide distance between the notes, A, A, G, A, A, E minor, and then it will sound good, and you'll see that it works in, on different uh, instruments as well. Okay, and then this again. And then instead of 7 and 7 on the G and B strings, you play a D7 chord, a bar on the fifth string and pinky and third fingers on seven on the B and D string. And you play strings one, two, three, and four. And you just play it. Okay? It's, um, or any other rhythm you like, okay? Everything can work here as long as you play the chord and enjoy yourself. If you watch Tommy Emmanuel play, he always enjoys himself. That's the key to his playing. He enjoys it every time, no matter how many times he plays it. He's, play he's been playing this for over 20 years, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think, uh, I think this is over 20 years old, this arrangement. And he's been playing this for over 20 years and he's still enjoying himself every time he plays it. That's the key. Enjoy yourself and it will sound good. Um, I like to play strings 2, 3, and 4, then the bass twice, then the chord, then the bass twice, then the chord. Okay, and it's... And then we come to, uh, to a very, very simple concept, but a brilliant, um, a brilliant placement within the arrangement. Uh, you'll see what I mean. It's, it's a very simple concept. It's a, it's a cliche even, it's a country, country uh, walking bass cliche, but Tommy Emmanuel pulls it off 
tremendously well uh, inside the arrangement. It gets a whole new meaning. Um, what I mean is this. <laughs> Which is uh, which is uh, two five one leading into A minor. It's two five one. It's a um, it's a voice leading. Uh, um, it's a composition trick, um, basic, mostly used in jazz, uh, and um, it leads back to A minor. Uh, we'll talk about it when we get there. But this. It's a country cliche, it's... You see, it works. But he took it completely out of context and put it in classical gas. That's why he's a genius. So, it's basically just um, on the bass. Now, he plays it a couple of different ways. Mainly, I'm going to show you both. It's zero two, um, yeah, zero two on the bass on the E bass, and then the same thing on the A string, zero two, and then a C chord, and then the same thing on the D string, and it leads into an F chord. Okay. Um, let's just finish the whole lick, and then it's, he doesn't play this all the time, sometimes it just goes into B flat major 7, but sometimes he does go um, chromatically. On the A bass, he does 3, 2, and then B flat major 7, which is... One on the A string, three on the D string, two on the G string, three on the B string. And then zero, two, uh, zero, 1 on the A string, and then 2 on the A string, turning this from B flat major 7 to um, B minor 7 flat 5. Okay? Along with this note. Let's just forget about theory and chord names. Just let's just call it B, um, B minor seven flat five. And then he plays strings one, two, and three. And then he plays on the E bass. Don't worry, I'm gonna repeat everything. We're gonna just going over this first time before we dissect it. On the E bass, he plays 3, 1, and then E7, with the pinky on 3 on the B string, and he plays this again. Okay, first string, second uh, string, third string. And then, either goes back to the, of course, um, or he just plays this. Okay? Just making noise with the guitar. It doesn't really matter what you play there. He just um, mutes the strings um, really high and then picks them, um, he rakes them, okay, a rake with, with force so it produces a high sound. And then, um, okay, it goes back. It doesn't matter what you do here, you can do this. Okay, and go back, or you can do this, if you like drumming on the guitar, or a more complex drum solo, um, or you can even do this. Okay, uh, and work on your timing, better than what I just did. Again, it doesn't matter, um, you can even do this. Okay, just make noise with the guitar. Doesn't really matter what you do here. Um, it's playful. It's meant to be humorous. Uh, Tommy Emmanuel does it for laughs. Um, and uh, actually using humor in music is a really strong tool and not 
used too often, unfortunately. Um, and Tony Emanuel does it extremely well, as he does everything else regarding guitar playing and music. Anyway, um, let's go over this again. Okay? It's 0 to G on the E string. Then on the A string to C. Then on the D string to F. Then on the A string, 3, 2, 1, and 1 is B flat major 7. And then 0, 1 on the A string. And then 2 on the uh, A string. Making this, it's the same chord by the way, you don't take the fingers off, uh, into uh, B minor, uh, B, B minor 7 flat 5. Again, you strum it. And then, and then 3 1 on the E string, and then E7. Okay? Um, that was the original uh, Mason Williams version of the A minor chord, by the way. Um, okay. Second variation of this. Okay, the second variation is playing 0, 2, 3, and then the rest of the chord. Okay, playing all the bass notes, then the chord. Okay, up to the B minor 7 flat 5. Got it? Again, 0, 2, 3 on the E bass, G. Okay, strings 1, 2, and 3. Then the same thing on the A string, 0, 2, 3, C, 0, 2, 3 on the D string, F, 3, 2, 1 on the A string, strings 2, 3, and 4 on the B flat major 7, okay, 0, 1, and then same ending, okay, you strum the B minor 7 flat 5, okay. Now, there's another variation for the E7 movement, for the transition of the bass notes. Um, you can do a complete chromatic movement. You can do 3, 2, 1, E7. 3, 2, 1, E7. Okay, but then you need to cut a note from this. Instead of playing you just leave the the last note off and instead of it play okay if you add a note here you take a note off of the previous line okay so it sounds like this again from the um, the ending of the A part lick bass 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 solo then the lick again harmonics lick lick again D7 ending without me talking with the second variation of the ending. Recognize the 
I don't know why I keep messing up the A minor part. Maybe because I'm uh, a little nervous because I'm shooting a long ass lesson. Anyway, did you recognize the chromatic motif? It was here. Um, it was in the bass note and the E string. And here. Okay, again, the B and D strings uh, were chromatic motif. We're gonna go over everything. Now, this. This is pretty simple. You just pick the G, uh, the G bass all the time. Okay? It's a vamp. And the solo on the... Play the G string with your third finger because you need your, uh, your pinky for the third fret of the B string and your first finger for the first fret uh, both on the B string and two bar strings one, two, and three. Okay? So, we pick this all the time. And the solo. Let's go over the melody first. It's this. And then... Okay? It's basically C, and then F minor, C. And then it's again C, and then F minor 6, and then C, over G. Okay, it's C over G, F minor over G, C over G, F minor 6 over G. So, um, it's a vamp. It's just like this, which is over A minor. Um, anyway, it's not a vamp. I made a fool of myself. It's not a vamp, it's a pedal note. I meant to say a pedal note. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Got confused. It's a pedal note. A vamp is uh, when a couple of chords repeat themselves uh, and you solo over them. Uh, that's a vamp. It's chords that... It's a chord progression. Uh, a very, very short chord progression. Two chords, three chords, four chords maximum. Uh, but mostly two chords uh, that repeat themselves and you, you solo over them. That's a vamp. A pedal note is where the bass just keeps repeating itself throughout chord changes. So this is G, C over G, uh, and then um, F minor over G, and then C over G again, and then F minor 6 over G, and then C over G. Okay? So, let's begin. Um, it's one on the B string and open E and G strings. So it's zero, one, zero. And then three on the B string, and then open E string. Now again, you can harmonize with the lower notes. Um, or you can play all the strings all the time. That works as well. And then, um, half a bar on strings 1, 2, and 3 on the 1st fret, with 3 on the B string. Oh, no, that's the 2nd time around. 1st time around is just the bar. Okay, it's F minor. And then, C again, 0, 1, 0. And then, again, C chord, 3, and then open E string again. And then uh, the F minor 6. It's the bar with 3 on the B string. And then C again. Got it? So it's C, uh, 3 on the B string, open E string, bar, on 1, C again. C, 3, open E string, uh, bar with 3 on the B string. C again, with the G bass picked all throughout. Okay? You, 
just ignore the thumb. The thumb keeps going. Okay? The thumb is like a hi-hat being um, drum. Okay? It's... And then this. What is this? This is an arpeggio. It's an E flat arpeggio. Okay? This is E flat. It's C shaped um, with the bass on E flat on six on the A string. And it's as if you're picking the chord. Okay? Now, first you slide into the chord. Okay? It's not. Okay? It's. Okay, the slide is two notes. It's one note and then the second note. Okay, you can slide it from three to six. You can slide it from five to six. Okay, doesn't matter. As long as it's two notes, it's do do. It's not rum do do do. It's not. Okay, because then you'll be missing a note. Um, we were here. So it's slide to six on the A string, five on the D string, three on the G string, four on the B string, three on the E string. Okay, so it's six, five, three, four, three. Just imagine, picture in your mind, a C shape here from four to six. Okay? So it's... And then keep the finger on three on E, pinky on six on the E string, then double pull off on the E string. Six, four, three. Okay? With your second finger on four. So it's... Okay, you can also do this if you want. Uh, instead of six, the B flat note twice, you can uh, move up to it. You can pick three on the E string, then four, then six, and pull off if you want. Um, so again, slide to six, five, three, four, three, six, six, four, three. Okay, on. Um, ascending strings. So, and then it's this. Now you can either pick it or strum it. Now it's G sharp. Now, the shapes are important. The G sharp chord is E shaped. Keep that in mind. And then E flat C shaped. Okay, the bar of G sharp is on four. And the bar of E flat is on three. Now the bar on E flat, you pick um, E flat over G. You pick the G bass on three. Okay? That's very, very important. And then you pick the G bass. Um, okay? And then it's a chromatic movement. Changing from an E shape to a C shape to an E shape to a C shape to an E shape to a C shape. Just the bar keeps going up one fret. Okay, it's very, very smart because the chords jump around, but the, the chromatic movement is inside the chords. Um, so the chromatic movement is inside the chords because the, the um, high E string 
um, is the chromatic movement, and the bass notes also move up in chromatic movement because you play the E string as you're connecting bass note between the chords. So you begin with a C shape. Um, and then you play the bass note um, three times. And you play the E shape. This is G sharp again. And then up one fret, and then you play the C shape again. This is F. And then up one fret, E shape, this is B flat. And then C shape again, up one fret, this is G. And then up one fret, this is C. And then up one fret, C shaped, this is A. Up one fret, E shaped, this is D. Up one fret, this is uh, B. And then this, which is E. But let's wait a second because uh, this is the next, this is, this is the beginning of the next lick, the next chromatic lick, which is also quite ingenious. Um, just let me emphasize that this is not E flat, it's E flat over G. This is not F, this is F over A. This is not um, G, this is G over B. And this isn't A, this is A over uh, C sharp. This is also not B, it's B over E flat. Why? Because you play the E bass all along. And then you get this. And then E. Um, so it's it's so simple, and yet it's perfect because he fits it in exactly the right place. He fits it exactly where it belongs. Uh, it makes sense musically. It's not just showing off. It's not just um, it's not just uh, making waves with his technique and his knowledge. It's musically correct. It sounds great, and that's 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 the the the, the greatness of Tommy Emmanuel. What else can I say? Um, so again, okay, let's talk about shapes. B e, E C. Okay, on four four and three. Then we go up one fret with the bar every time. Four E. C, 5, 6, E, 7, C, 8, E, 9, C, 10, E, 11, C. So it's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, okay? Um, and three bass notes between every two chords, okay? Um, and one last time, you begin with C on three, which is E flat, and it's C, D, e, C, D, e, C, D, e, C, D, e, C, and then the E chord itself. Now, Tony Emanuel plays it a little differently. He plays something which is a bit harder technically. He plays it like this. Um, okay, I'm not fluent with this. Why? Because he uses his thumb. Okay, he uses his thumb for the bass notes and he plays uh, let's just play it here for a second. He plays uh, an F shape for the E shape. He plays an F, a small F shape. Then he takes his the second finger, finger down one fret for the C shape. Okay. So the only thing that changes is the second finger jumping from the second fret to the third fret. So, okay, and the bass is played with the thumb. So it's this. Okay, it's um, 
with the finger on the second fret, then here with the finger on the third fret. Okay, so it's. The only thing that changes is. The only thing that changes is the second finger. Okay, it begins with on the second, uh, the second finger on the second string, third string, second string, third string, second string, third string, second string, third string, second string, with the thumb going along with it, where the bar is. That's how he plays it. Um, I'm sure that if I had more time. I would have practiced it and succeeded at it, but um, <laughs> but I'm not fluent with that technique yet. With, I'm, I, it's not too comfortable for me. If you want, practice it. Um, but playing it this way is not too bad for the rest of us mortals. Tell me, Emmanuel can do whatever the heck he likes um, because he can. Uh, because he practiced a lot. Um, if you ask him. I'm sure he'll tell you exactly how much he practiced and probably still does practice every day um, because that's what professional musicians do. They practice and then practice some more. Anyway, um, small mosquito, um, coming to suck my blood. Now the mosquito broke my train of thought. Oh, this. Now let's go over the chords first. It's a bar on strings 1, 2, 3, and 4 on the um, ninth fret. The pinky is on 12 on the E string. This is E, okay? This is an E chord because if it's a complete G shape, it's an E chord. Then the bar goes to 11, the pinky stays on 12. And you add a finger on um, the G string on, no, I'm sorry, the bar goes to 10. It goes up one fret, not two. And the second finger goes on 11 on the G string. Okay? This is, um, just a second, this is F sharp minor 7 flat 5 which is um, which is the 2 of the E minor chord of the E minor scale never mind it's just know that this okay from the the fourth string up it's 10 11 10 12 this is this is F sharp minor 7 flat 5, okay? F sharp half diminished. Then um, the bar and the second finger go up one fret again, but that's extremely uncomfortable, so what you do is just place a normal minor 7 flat 5 chord here, okay, instead of this. Stuffed into. You just play this normal chord, normal shape. It's uh, 12 11, 12 11 on the first, second, third, and fourth string. It's just like this. Remember? Minor 7 flat 5, same thing, pinky on 12. And then bar on 12, and second finger on 13 on the G string. Okay, this is just E again. This is an E chord. Actually, it's E7. Because we've got this. Okay, so it's E7. <sighs> Alright, so again, bar on 9, pinky on 12, bar on 10, uh, pinky on 12, second finger on 11 on the G string. Okay, F sharp, minor 7, flat 5. And this, pinky on 12, 11 below it, 12 below it, 11 below it, 12, 11, 12, 11, from the first to the fourth string, 
Um, this is uh, C sharp. I forgot to mention this is C sharp minor seven flat five. And then this, which is E seven. It's a bar on twelve and second finger on thirteen on the G string. So. Okay, and you begin with the E chord, so you were here, and then this. You play the E string. Now you can mute the A string with blocking it from below with the barring finger. Just touch the A string so it doesn't play. Um, so we were here. Okay. Um, you don't want to count it, okay? If you count, you'll get confused. You want to hear it. So it's two, three, four, one, two, okay? And then, okay, the E, E, second chord, two, three, four, one, two, and then again, twice more, next chord, two, three, four, one, two, and then the next chord again. Make some noise with the guitar. Go back to the A part. Um, so again, two, three, four, one, two, two, three, four, one, two, two, three, four, one, two, two, three, four, one. I know I said don't count it, and then I counted. What I meant was don't count the bass notes. Count the beat. Don't count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Don't count E notes. I should have been more specific instead of contradicting myself. Don't count bass notes. Don't do this. One, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 one, Always know where the first beat is. That's a different way of putting it. Always know where the one is. Uh, because that's always where you want to be on the beginning of the bar. Let's not go into theory. One. Keep the A note blocked. Don't forget, block the A string. Okay, mute it, block it with your finger, your closest finger, just touch it from below so you won't play this. Okay, you don't want this sound. Okay, you want a clean E bass. Okay, I'm picking the A along with it, but you don't hear it because I'm blocking it. Okay, same thing for the second chord. A note is blocked. Same goes for the third chord. A note is blocked. Fourth chord. Okay? Let's play the let's play this entire part again. Ugh. Sorry, I keep playing the Mason Williams A part. It's stuck in my fingers, I'm sorry. Um, but you can play it. Tommy Emmanuel sometimes plays it. 
you can play it. <sighs> All right, next point. Um, the next point is this. Either go to the next part or go back to the C part, to this. Okay? Um, or to the next part, which is. Okay? Um, what's going on here? It's basically a lot of chords with, um, with a melody outlining the chords themselves and connecting the chords to one another. And in the end, there you've got a chromatic bass lick. Motif again. You've got a chromatic bass lick. You've got um, oh, it's it's this. It's uh, this isn't chromatic. It's three two zero, and then it's a chromatic lick. It's with your thumb. It's okay. It's. The motif again. So let's begin. A minor. You bar the fifth fret on the um, on the first, second, third strings with the A bass. Then two on the G string. Then open B string. Then C over G. Okay. It's one on the B string, three on the E bass with an open G string between them. Okay, you play all three strings. Strings two, three, and six. And then with your pinky, three on the B string, open E string, F. You play the entire chord. You play one uh, strings one, two, three, and four. Then with your pinky, three on the E string, five on the E string, then, um, minor 7 flat 5 chord, this time with your pinky on 8. And then one fret down with your pinky on 7. This is A minor 7 flat 5, this is G sharp minor 7 flat 5. Now sometimes Tommy Emmanuel uh, bars the 6th fret and plays this. Um, pinky and third fingers on eight on the E and G strings, and he picks the uh, all four strings, so it's eight six eight six, and then he takes the fingers back, and then you get a G sharp minor seven flat five chord. Okay, the, uh, again, it's uh, this remains throughout both chords. Okay, uh, I just like to do this. I like this version better. Don't know why. I just do. But you can do this if you want to play what he plays. Even though this, he also plays this from time to time. Again, he plays with his arrangement. You can play it with it too. So that's the first line. Okay, so it's A minor. 2, 0, C over G, 3, 0, F, 3, 5, 2 chords uh, uh, with the melody being 8 and 7 on the E string. Okay, so 5, 2, 0, C over G, 3, 0, F, 3, 5, 8, 7. And this again. Okay? Almost to the end. 
Um, so it's A minor, C over G, F, 3, 5, and then it's G, G7. Okay? Uh, simple G with 3 on the E string, then G7 with 1 on the E string. Okay? It's, this is the only change. Uh, so it's... Now for the bass change part. It's C. Now the basses change from C to B to A. So it's... And you play the chord however you want to feel it. You can play... Or you can... Or you can play... It. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, do whatever sounds good to you. Again, Tommy Emanuel changes it all the time. I'm going to repeat this because um, many guitar players think they should copy exactly what the other guitar player does and that's, that's just not creative. Create your own sound, create your own arrangement, play what you want to play. Um, you can play what he plays later, okay? You can, you can emulate whatever the guitar player plays. Um, after you try and experiment with it. If you get stuck on one version, then all you're doing is playing somebody else's sound. And why not play your own? Play your own sound. So, C. C over B. Okay, leave the first finger on the B string. And then uh, A minor. Um, a minor 7 actually but add the pinky on 3 on the B string and then take it off again okay so it's C C over B A minor 7 sus 4 and then A minor 7 again so it's C C over B pinky first fret again okay so it's Let's try another way of explaining. C, C over B, A bass with 3 on the B string, A bass with 1 on the B string. Okay, I'm sure I covered all options of explaining this. Okay, so um, I like to play the bass notes twice. twice, so it's four times. So it's C, uh, and I play the chord along with, um, um, I, I play the chord every couple of bass notes. Every time I change a bass. Okay. I really hope you got it. I have no other way, I have no, no more ways of explaining it. And then this. Bass notes are played with the thumb. It's the E string and it's 0, 1, 2, 3. Now you can play 3 with the thumb, um, but I change into G6. Um, I just use my second finger for the final bass note, the G note. Uh, you can play the thumb as well. Tommy Emanuel does, he does this. Um, Okay. But then again, sometimes he may play like this. I don't know. He changes it all the time. Um, it's D. Uh, it's D sus. It's D D over E. Okay, it's D five over E. But because you've got the open E string and E on the bass, then technically it's D sus two over E. Okay, it's D sus 2 over E. But for a um, simpler way of explaining this, let's call it D5 over E. Actually, that's not a lot more, a lot simpler than what I just said. So D sus 2 over E. Uh, chord names are a bitch. We already know that. Um, anyway, you play strings 2 and 3 on 3 and 2. 
Uh, it's a D chord with E on the bass. Then, zero on the E string. Then, one on the E string. You still have the D chord going. And you play one on the bass along with it. So now it's D minor over F. Again. Use your second and third fingers for the D5 chord. I forgot to mention that. But I'm sure you have eyes. You saw which fingers I'm using. You're intelligent. Um, so uh, be alert if I forget to mention anything. Um, D over E. Zero on the E string. D minor over F. Then take the finger off and it's D sus 2 over F sharp because the bass is now on 2. Okay. All strings, 1, 2, 3, and 6. And then this. 3 on the B string, open G string, and 3 on the E bass. Now, if the if the E string is still ringing, then this is technically G6. But if it's not, and you're only playing this, then it's G5. Again, chord names, let's leave them out of this. Um, and if you play it with the bass, you just take the, sec the second finger off and you play it with the bass. Okay, so it's this, or this. So again, bass notes. Um, yeah, E, F, F sharp, G. We good till now? Really hope so. Um, then, C, simple C chord. The melody is this. E string three times, then pinky. On three on the B string, then take the pinky off, one on the B string. So the melody is... Okay? But play the entire chord all along. Okay? Or you can not play the E string when you play the B string melody. But if you play the E string, it adds a bit of flavor to it. Okay? Then E7. Um, then you repeat everything. Okay. Um, the E for uh, the E7. You can pick in any way you like. You can do it. And then, okay. So it's. Or you can pick the bass. Or you can pick the chord. Okay, again, A minor. G, G7, C, C over B, A minor, D over E, D minor over F, D over F sharp, D sus 2 over F sharp, G, C, E7. And then either go here. do what I like to do and go here okay if you want to play the long version go back to the C part if you want to shorten things up a little go to the next part the next part is this okay and, and it connects well to the to the E because it's a B bass 
Uh, it's the five of the E chord. Now, um, again, this is played for humor. Now, this is done for humor purposes only. Um, clearly, this is a humorous part. Thumb on seven on the E bass. Okay, you play the B bass throughout. Uh, again, a pedal note. Now, the melody is, it's a chord melody this time. It's E, E, B. Okay? Bar the th uh, with your third finger, with your third finger, you bar the ninth fret. Okay? And you pick strings two, three, and four. And then um, on strings two, three, and four, you play frets seven, eight, nine, which is a B chord because it's taken out of this. Okay? With your thumb on B again. So it's. Okay? Just like that. And then you repeat it. Then you play the same thing, back two frets, uh, and the thumb is still on B. So you play D and A over B. Okay? So. Okay? Keep the thumb on seven. Now, um... You play this twice, and whenever you're not picking a chord, you pick a bass. Okay, you play this, and you play the bass notes again. You don't, you don't do this. Um, you don't do this. You don't stop playing the bass notes. That's what I mean. Um, see for yourself. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't sound good. Okay? If I stop playing the bass notes, it loses, it loses the whole point, um, the whole point of this part. The whole point is playing the bass notes all the time, so slowly. back two frets again uh, now the thumb goes along with it you have no choice um, you can't play it on five and on three to five and have your thumb on seven um, and this is where I personally switch because this is more comfortable for me you can keep the thumb on five and play uh, G over A um, but I like to play G over A like this again the fingers are uh, on three, four, and five, on strings two, three, and four, and the bass is on five. And I mute the E string and the A string. Okay? And then back to more frets, to F over G. And then G over A again. G and then E just a simple E chord and then again you've got a choice either you go to the next part which is the ending or you go back to the A part and you play the A and B parts again and then go back uh, go to the next part which is the ending this okay um, because, again, the, both this part 
the one we just played, okay? And the B part end on E. The B part end on E7, and this one ends on E. Both are dominant chords for A minor. Now, uh, the next part, I don't believe we have to play this part again, right? It's pretty simple. Um, the next part is this. Now, again, chromatic movement. The bass notes, okay, uh, are chromatic. Okay? Um, and the final chord is E again. It's E over G sharp. Let me explain. You play this. This is um, it's B over E flat. Why is it B? It's B because this is B5. It's this and octave up with E flat on the bass. Now, this is an inversion of this. This is B. Okay, D shape. If we take D up here, it's B. Let's forget what up here means because I haven't said the fret numbers yet. I'm just explaining the logic of the chord. And we take the high note from the E string, from one E string to another E string on the same fret. So. This is an inversion of B, and it's B over E flat. That's the chord. That's the logic. How do you pull this off? First finger on 9 on the D string. Second finger, no, let's leave the second finger yet. Um, first finger on 9 on the D string. Third finger on 11 on the G string. Pinky on the B string on 12, and the second finger is on 11 on the E string, on the E bass. So, you've got 11 on the bass, and from the D string up, it's 9, 11, 12. Okay? Remember this shape. Okay, let's call this... How should we call it? Let's call this shape A. Okay? Now the next shape is a bar on 9 and the bass note goes down one fret to 10. This is E over D. Okay? It's E over D. It's an inversion of, um, of E7. The seven is on the bass. Okay? So, this is B and this is E. With chromatic bass notes. Uh, now, if this is not clear yet, you don't play the E string, the high E string, and the A string. Okay, you just play strings 1, 2, 3, and 6. Again, you need to mute them because you play them like this. You mute the A string and you mute the high E string by touching them with your fingers. I touch the E string with my pinky and I touch the A string with my second finger. Now, these two chords... Um, it's the same two shapes. It's shape A and shape B. Okay? Let's call this the, um, the major chord. Let's call this the seventh chord. Okay? So it's major and then seven. And then you, uh, you take the bass note back one fret and you build the major chord again. Okay? This time on 
7, 9, and 10. And then the bar is on 7, and the bass is on 8. And then the bass is on 7, and you build a major chord on... You build the 5, the, fifth, the, the, the power chord on 5, 7, and 8. Then you bar 5, and the bass is on 6 for the 7th chord. Um, then the bass is on 5, and you build the chord on 3, 5, and 4. And then the bar is on 3, and the bass is on 4. And then, final chord, um, this time you stay with the bass on 4, and you build the chord on 2, 4, and 5, and you're playing an E chord. An E over G sharp chord. You're gonna make me say the full chord names, right? Okay. B over E flat. E over D. A over C sharp. D over C, G over B, C over B flat, yeah, C over B flat, I was, I thought, I got, I got confused, um, then F over A, B flat over G sharp, and then E over G sharp, okay? If you need to know the chord names. So, okay, and you play it twice. Now, tell me Emmanuel likes to slide up to the bass. Okay, let's say we're on E. Um, we were here, um... Right? Remember? first and then show you different ways you can pick it. Um, it's A minor add 9. A minor add 9 is A minor but instead of 2 on the G string you put the pinky on the fourth fret of the G string. Okay so you've got okay and then he turns it into A add 9. To turn it into A add 9, instead of A minor add 9, you need 2 on the B string instead of 1. Instead of 1 on the B string, you have 2 on the B string. Okay? But this is uncomfortable, so he just switches fingers. Okay? And instead of a minor, minor add 9, you have major add 9. And then it takes these two fingers up on the fret. Okay, let's not discuss this chord, um, even though it's... No, I don't want to discuss it. Um, let's just say it's somewhat similar to a uh, B minor 755, but we're not talking about theory anymore. Um, not when we're this close to the end. Then, this. B, um, B uh, add 11 over A, because you're still on the A bass, and it's B. All fingers are on 4, A shape. It's like we took an A chord up to frets. And we have an open E string. Now, the open E string is the 4 of the chord. If you play a B sus 4 chord, 
then you have an E, an E note, but because you play both notes, then it's at 11. It's B at 11 over A. Again, I contradicted myself blatantly. Um, I said no more theory, and then I go and theorize. What I mean is that I don't want to theorize over this chord, because this is uh, way too complex uh, to get into right now. Let's just say, let's just call it the chord, okay? It's B minus 7 flat 5 over A without one of the notes. Okay, let's just leave it at that. Um, and I'm a teacher, I, I can't help it but teach. I feel bad if I don't give up all of the information. Uh, and then it's A at 9 again, and then it's the chord again, and then a series of chords to end on. Now tell me Emmanuel um, usually plays this. It begins with this. Improvised. I don't think he plans what he's gonna play. He just begins with this picking pattern, which I'm going to show you, and then moves on to whatever he likes to play, or just moves on to the final chords. Now, um, the picking pattern is bass, A bass, again, it's a pedal note, A bass, second string, third string, D string, with your thumb. Then strings one, two, three, and sometimes you add the fourth string, sometimes you don't. Let me show you. Strings five, two, three, four, one, two, three, bass again. Now with the fourth string at the end. Okay, if you want to connect the chords, you play the fourth string. If you want to add a bit of drama and a bit of a break, then you don't. You, you don't play it, you leave it out. Now you can play with the rhythm. Uh, you can add uh, quarter notes, you can add... Um, half notes, you can, you can play with it as well. Um, you see, you can, you can be creative here. Um, Aspire to be creative, to create with your guitar instead of copying someone else. That's, that's what I'm trying to say here. And then um, this little picking pattern. Um, is just picking a note with your thumb and then quickly picking strings one and two uh, in triplets. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Thumb, finger, finger. Okay? Um, thumb, second finger, first finger. Okay? Thumb, first string, second string. In triplets. Okay? Um, the thumb being the accentuation, the, uh, what you want to emphasize. Um, and you just arpeggiate with the thumb. You play. simple arpeggio with the thumb and just play along with it and after each thumb pick pick strings one and two okay um. Once your 
we're back on the cord after two or three loops. Um, oh, by the way, don't return to the minor uh, to the A minor add nine chord. He plays it first, and then he just uh, keeps going around chromatically. Uh, from two to three to four, okay, with the with another pedal note on uh, w with four on the G string, okay. Uh, it's these notes together and these notes on two, three, and four, moving around to two, three, four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, ending on three. Um, you don't go back to the A minor add 9 chord, okay? That's just the first chord. Um, the reason, the logic behind it is that the whole piece was an A minor and then he turned it into a major add 9, so it's no longer an A minor. It's now major. Then, um, he plays a series of chords. The only thing you need to know is that you end on A minor. How you lead into A minor is your own choice. You can play E and then A minor. Um, or you can play G, C, F, D, G, E. Something like that, or you can play G, C, F, C, G, A minor. Or you can play this, the... Okay, just... If you want. Doesn't matter at all. Tommy Emanuel changes it. I've said it a million times. If it's not clear to you that you can change it, then... I've tried. I'm sorry. The important thing is to enjoy what you're playing and understand that music is a living, breathing thing. Okay? Okay, you can end any way you want. Okay? Any chords you wish, even these. Okay, the 251 from the... Okay, from this part, you can take them. Okay, B minor 7 flat 5, E7, you can do it. Uh, you can do this again. Okay, if it sounds good to you, play it. And you're done! Ha! Huh. Thank God. Um, before, before you go, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Why not? The lessons are for free and will always be free. The tabs are also for free. Go download them from the website and if you want to give something back for this lesson uh, or for any other lesson, there's a donation button on the website. I'd be very, very grateful for any donation whatsoever. You can send the dogs a snack if you, uh, if you wish. Um, and uh, again, the, this lesson is, is partly thanks to uh, a very, very generous donation that helped me clear some time to sit down and learn this and transcribe it and practice it. So um, the donations do go back to Lick and Riff. Everything goes back to Lick and Riff. So go, download the tab, donate if you like, and go get this under your fingers, play it. Practice it, have patience, play it slowly at first. Learn it lick by lick and just move on to the next lick only when you're ready and only when you've got the previous lick down. Don't hurry. It took me about a month to learn this and practice this. Um, so just have fun with it. As long as you have fun, nothing else matters. Um, and I'll see you the next lesson. Thank you so much for watching.